In this episode, I'm stepping through my process to mill and polish custom brass buttons for my Arcator 3 handheld. We'll talk about the operations for milling and polishing the parts on the Pocket NC using Fusion 360. Stick around. If you haven't seen my latest handheld arcade, it's called the Arcader 3. It's one of my pet projects and really an engineering testbed for all the microfabrication techniques I employ. I'm constantly looking for new techniques and practices to improve the quality and performance of the things I make. Things that force me to learn and improve my craft. I've always wanted to build an all metal version of the Arcader handheld, but it's just never been the right time. 2020 is finally the right time. The design will be milled from a solid block of 6061 aluminum with all buttons milled from 360 brass. While I have a few tricks in mind for the final build, milling the shoulder buttons is one of the more challenging parts to be manufactured. Today we're going to walk through the setup and fabrication for the left shoulder button. For that we'll leverage Fusion 360 to create a stack of operations to mill the finished button out of a 1 inch rod of brass. As this part has lots of off axis angles, we'll be milling it on the pocket NC, 5 axis CNC. Once it's milled, we'll then walk through creating a couple operations to polish the part while it's still on the machine. Sound like fun? Let's get started. Stepping over into Fusion 360, we load up the part. Now, while I prefer to create separate project files for cam operations, there's no reason that you have to do it this way. But it does make it a lot easier if you have to work with machine fixtures, models, or just want to adorn cam reference planes and geometry. In the setup project, my fixture and model are in the correct orientation and placement for the Pocket NC. If you're interested in why that matters, check out my Intro to 5-Axis video that talks about the considerations for getting started with the Pocket NC. Diving into the manufacturer workspace, I've created a setup for each model that I'm milling with this machine and fixture. In each setup, I've referenced the machine origin and fixture, which will be used by operations to determine what moves are necessary for changes in tool orientation. The stock size is set to a fixed cylinder which represents the brass rod that we'll be milling today. Side note, for all of these operations, I've derated the feeds and speeds by about 30% to get great surface quality without pushing the machine too hard. For me, running dry, the time saved is just not worth the risk of breaking bits and pushing machine limits. By the way, all feeds and speeds are calculated using HSM Advisor. If you haven't used that tool, I highly recommend it. It'll save you lots of trial and error. I've got a video on HSM Advisor you can check out here. Now to rough out the general shape, I've used several operations. Starting with the adaptive rough, I use a 1 8 inch 3 flute flat ML. Next, I set the tool orientation perpendicular to the top of the bar stock and identify the stock contours. On the passes tab, I set a max roughing step down of 2 mm and a fine step down of 0.1 mm. Then set the stock to leave to 0.5 mm, leaving some material to finish later. Once roughed, I added two contour operations, one to finish the wall and the next to finish the lower edge of the button. These both share the same axis as before, which is perpendicular with the top of the stock. Next, I run a spiral operation on the face to clean it up and bring the face down to a finish level. Although this operation uses the same three flute flat end mill, the tool orientation was set perpendicular to the face of the button. Nothing special going on here. On the passes tab, I set the direction to outside in and the spiral mode to concentric circles with a step over of 0.5 millimeters. With that, these four operations were post-processed and sent to the machine. The Pocket NC makes it easy to push files, just load up a browser and interact directly with the machine. As all of these operations use the same end mill, I probed the tool length offset and was off to the races. With the button roughed and the sides and face finished, back in Fusion 360 I had more finishing to do. I added a flow operation to smooth the rounded edge of the face. For that I used a 1 8 inch 2 flute ball end mill, just happened to be what I had. The tool orientation was set perpendicular to the face and the button edge geometry was then selected. The flow directions were set on the selected geometry, then on the passes tab I set it to 20 passes and used multi-axis machining. 
That operation was then posted and sent to a machine where the ball end mill worked its multi-axis magic. There are lots of ways that this could have been accomplished. I probably could have used a flat end mill with this multi-axis operation, but this was the strategy I went with. To finish the face, next I engrave the button label on it using a trace operation. Selecting an engraving bit, again, I set the tool orientation perpendicular to the button face, and on the passes tab, I set the chamfer tip offset to 0.15. Post processed that out and pushed it to the machine. Running it on the machine, the button face markings were engraved. With that, the button was mostly finished. Now, while the machine finish is nice as is, it needs to be polished to match the vision I have for the final product. To do that, I could pull it off the machine and buff it by hand, but since it's already fixtured, back in Fusion 360, I created a new ball end mill that represents a 1 8 inch shank polished bit that I have. I then add a couple operations and perform polishing on the face and edge. For that, I use the morph spiral operation using the new custom end mill. I select the face and then the tool orientation perpendicular to the face on the passes tab, I set the step over to 0.2 millimeters, and for axial stock to leave, I entered minus 0.1 millimeter. This will cause the operation to be generated 0.1 millimeters below the face to compress the polishing bit against the face. The second operation was a contour operation focused on the edge of the face. Again, using a custom end mill, the orientation, the 0.2 millimeter step down, and the minus 0.1 radial stock to leave to compress the polishing bit against the edge. I post-processed both of these out, sent them over to the machine, and before starting the job, I probed for the tool length offset, and then loaded the bit with polishing compound. For both operations, I ran them at 5,000 RPM, around 10 inches per minute. And when finished, the button had a great reflection and shine. So, I guess that worked out. This is something I've always wanted to try, but just never had the right project to do it. And with that, the button was done. To take care of the last step, I created a couple operations to cut away the stem that had been holding the button to the stock. These operations used a 1 8 inch 3 flute flat end mill and a tool orientation perpendicular to the sidewall of the button. I removed the stem from both sides, then I performed a simple slot to ramp down carefully to 0.2 millimeters, leaving the button minimally attached to the stock. And with that, the job was finished. Like, completely finished. No post-processing or anything ready for assembly, which is pretty nice. And this represents the first button, now I'll have to do that again for each of the remaining nine buttons. A bit of work, but it's going to look nice when it's complete. Hopefully you enjoyed a look at what goes into milling this sort of multi-axis object. And as a bonus, polishing the part on the mill is a surprisingly easy and effective thing to do. For those of you awaiting other project streams on the channel, I'll have more updates and be sharing lots of neat stuff in the coming weeks, so stay tuned. By the way, sharing this work with you is just to put it out there and Hopefully someone finds it useful. You can think of it as another outlet that you have to learn, and I'm all about learning. DIY engineering is founded around being a student of life. As such, there's a guy I listen to named John Gary Bishop. If you haven't heard of him, I encourage you to check out his books and audio tapes. He's got some great perspectives on life, and while this isn't a paid endorsement, his work always puts me in a great mindset, whether he makes me laugh or forces me to rethink something. It's always good stuff. I'll put a link in the description. Check him out if you're interested. So that's going to do it for today. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. And if you like this particular video, give it a big thumbs up. That's kind of how this system works. Big shout out to my channel supporters. Thank you for all you do to help the channel. Uh, you can help out too by purchasing products through the affiliate links in the description, Patreon, or just giving this video a thumbs up. Have a great day. And in the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh.